Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. Today I want to talk about microphones. Now there's usually two different types of microphones, dynamic and condenser. There's actually more, there's ribbon, but we're not gonna cover that today. That'll be the subject of a future video because that's all in a class by itself. But basically the two types of microphones, dynamic, which is also referred to as moving coil, and condenser, which is also referred to as a capacitor mic because basically a condenser is a capacitor. So let's start out with the concepts first and then we'll go ahead and give you some examples of what these mics sound like when it comes to capturing sounds. So when you start out with, uh, let's use this for an example. This is a cylinder. Um, it's actually an empty toilet paper tube. And I have put some foil over one end with a rubber band to secure it in place. Now, if I had some fine wire and wound it around here many, 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 many times, okay? And then I take the two leads, that would be my microphone right here. And you would put this, suppose this is a round magnet. Every time you move a coil of wire through a magnet, you're generating electricity. So in a microphone, as you speak, it pushes against this diaphragm, whether it's foil or paper or plastic or mylar or whatever it is, it's going to push this here. And you're gonna get these movements here. And that's going to translate sound into electrical energy. And of course, at the other end, you're doing the opposite. You have the same kind of concept in your speaker where you're going to apply a voltage here and it's gonna be the voltage of what you recorded. The exact same thing the microphone picked up is being fed into here but amplified many times and over here is a cone that reproduces the sound. So that's what a speaker is. So anyway, that is a dynamic microphone also known as moving coil. The other kind is a condenser Again, also known as a capacitor mic. A capacitors need what to operate? Electricity. Now, what a capacitor microphone looks like on the inside, the guts. You have a metal plate, a stationary metal plate, and then you have another metal plate, not too far separated from that, and that one can move. So as you speak into it, it's vibrating, okay? And the difference between the two in distance, uh, that vibration, generates a small amount of electricity. So small that it's not usable as a dynamic mic is. Instead, it needs power to amplify that. So whether that's a battery or phantom power, most condenser mics use what they call phantom power. And a lot of mixers and mic preamps and amplifiers or PAs do is they supply that so that you can plug in a condenser mic. If you don't have that, you cannot use a condenser mic without power. Now, some condenser mics like this, it's handheld. This solves that problem. This, actually, if you unscrew it, there's a battery here. It's a It's a one and a half volt double A battery, but you have condenser microphone right here in a handheld without the need for phantom power. That's pretty cool. But anyway, dynamic microphones. These are what's basically in use as live sound. You'll find that all over the place for live performance. They're also used in the studio. Condenser mics actually are used more in the studio, although they can also be used for live as well. And the reason they're used more in the studio, small diaphragm condenser mics like this are great for miking instruments, acoustic instruments, guitars, overheads, drums, all that kind of stuff. In fact, you can mic an entire orchestra with two of these. Okay. This is most accurately going to record the way your human ear is going to hear. So for an accurate reproduction, 
small diaphragm condenser mics. They usually call them half inch, which is not accurate because a lot of them take into account the whole mic size instead of just the diaphragm size. Large diaphragm mics, like this one here, uh, one inch they call them, which again is not accurate because they can take into account other factors. Those are used for vocals. You'll see that in recording studios with a, a pop filter in front of them. But basically, if you want to sound really good and sound warm and larger than life, you want to use a large condenser studio mic. That's why they use that, that to record vocals. Well, you can record guitar with it too and make acoustic guitar sound nice and warm and larger than life. So you can use either of these small or large diaphragm condenser mics. Small if you want people to hear exactly what you sound like and large if you want to warm that up a bit and sound larger than life. So it sound like you're on a record basically. Dynamic microphones like this. This is a Shure SM57, the most popular mic in the world. You'd be hard pressed to find a recording studio anywhere in the world that doesn't have a pair of these. But basically this is built for everything. You can mic drums with it. You can mic vocals with it. You actually, the president of the United States, this has been the official mic on the podium there for decades. Uh, you'll see that with the special wind filter on there. And this is what you'll see when you watch the president of the United States talk. Again, Shure SM57. Tom Petty used to use these to record vocals with live, sometimes in the studio. He liked the way he sounded on this. So, very cool. Actually, this withstands some pretty high sound pressure levels, also known as SPL. So, basically, you could record drums with it. You can record anything. You can even put this right next to a Marshall stack and it will pick that up perfectly. It's even been used as a hammer in the studio. So perfect all around tool. In fact, if you don't have any microphones and you're just beginning, this would be the mic I'd recommend that you get. You can use it for anything and you don't need phantom power with it because it's not a condenser. Shure SM58 is its brother with the globe mesh here for a windscreen and a pop filter built in. This is not an SM58. This is a Samson R11. It's an inexpensive mic. It's like $30, $40, something like that. And it sounds great. So this is the lineup that I have here. This is a Rode M5 small diaphragm condenser mic. This is an Audio-Technica AT2020 large diaphragm condenser mic. This is a Samson R11, and that's a dynamic mic. And this is a Shure SM57, also a dynamic mic. With the exception of the Samson, all of these are about $100 a piece. So... You'll find them selling for more. Maybe you can find them selling for less, but they're about $100 a piece, except for this Samson R11. Great mic. Pick it up for around $30 or $40. All right, so let's see what these things sound like. All right, we're going to take some acoustic instruments here. Well, first of all, we got to clap. Okay, so next let's try a melodica, which is basically a breath-driven keyboard.
Okay, next, let's try a chime. Pretty cool. Could you tell the difference? All right. Now let's try um, this percussion thing right here. Basically, I have this wood percussion instrument with these ridges here and a wand. And this wand is tapered. So depending on whether I hit this on the tapered side, or the thicker side, you get a different sound. So let's try these with the various mics. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, let's try it with the uh, larger end. And actually, I don't have to use that wood thing. If I use this metal wand, it's going to sound completely different. All right. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you. With... Basically, cardioid pattern mics, and cardioid just means it's going to pick up what's in front of it. It's going to try its best to reject what's on its sides and try to do total rejection from behind the mic. So it's only going to pick up what's in front of it. Now, if you have an omnidirectional mic, one that picks up in all directions, you don't get that proximity effect at all. So here is a demonstration of the proximity effect. The closer that I speak to a microphone, the deeper the tone gets, so there's more bass. The deeper the tone gets, the closer I speak to a cardioid mic. The closer I get, the deeper my voice sounds. The closer I get, the deeper my voice sounds. The closer I get, the deeper my voice sounds. The closer I get, the deeper my voice sounds. So as we withdraw and pull back, that's also used to a singer's advantage. When they know what to do with it, they can use the mic, bring it in to get an effect that's deeper than they usually are, or pull it back. Now when you hear these DJs on these talk shows, they get close to the mic, really close, so that you can hear their voice more with a bass in it. Howard Stern would be one of those where you can hear that bass in it. But if you hear him talking in person without a mic, he doesn't sound like that at all. So that's thanks to the proximity effect on that. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.